What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. Help other people to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores Cannon has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT. Now you can learn her method by going directly to themoreshow.com forward slash QHHT. And don't forget to mention the discount coupon More Talks. Carol, just thank you so, so much for joining us today. Yes, thank you for having me, Kevin. It's great to have you on, Carol. So just tell the audience a little bit about yourself to begin with, and then we'll go into a bit of your story as well. Yes, I am a spiritual medium. I have done over 14,000 readings or contacts with the spirit world. I'm also an author of four books on mediumship and healing. And uh, I also am a workshop presenter and I've done many podcasts and I'm a regular on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. All right. Well, thank you very much. So if I was to ask you then just to begin with, how did this all start, right? How did you get into this work? Let's go probably, I would say, you're probably going to say because we've spoken about this up here, just uh, about 28-ish years ago, this all started for you? It did. And uh, I, I came on to this pathway through kind of a uh, catastrophic event. And that event was a fire. And it burned me out of the business that I was running at the time. And for about a year, I floundered and had no idea what I was to do with my life. I was in my mid thirties at that point, And I got a phone call from a friend of mine inviting me to a metaphysical center in a small town there where I live. And so uh, it took a couple of phone calls actually for her to get me there. And when I went, when I, as soon as I walked into the building, I felt as though I had come home. And from there, everything, uh, kind of blossomed for me. I took many, many classes. I became certified in hands-on healing, became a Reiki master, became a spiritual healer. And then I studied speaking mediumship. And I've taken a lot of training and given a lot of training in um, evidentiary mediumship. Interesting. So... You never felt that you had this gift before the fire? Did anyone have it in the family? No, no. I, I am sort of the proverbial black sheep of my family. I have a very scientifically oriented family. Um, however, I've, I'm extremely skilled and studied in astrology as well as mediumship. So I've studied my own birth chart, my natal chart, and right there in my chart, um, I, I became aware that I've actually done this in previous incarnations here uh, on the earth. And so I had a natural tendency that was with me when I was born. Uh, I was very interested in the paranormal. I was very interested in UFOs, ghosts, the spirit world, um, anything, you know, Bigfoot, anything really that we would consider the unexplained. So when I was six years old, seven years old, I was reading books on UFOs, 
Um, you know, eventually I became interested in the Bermuda Triangle, um, you know, ghost hauntings, all of that sort of thing. And so it was sort of a natural interest for me from the time I was very young. And also, from the time I could talk, I was always asking the question, why? Or what's going on beneath the surface of things? I was never content to be in consensus, you know, thought. And so I always wanted to delve into what was going on underneath the surface of things. And uh, that stays with me even today. Interesting. So it took fire. It took your previous business, in a sense, to be gutted out, to be burnt out, for you to make this shift. And again, in your charts, it's all about time. You weren't ready in your early 20s or late 20s to do the work. It had to be at the time it happened. Exactly. And, you know, it's it's intuition. It's being at the right place at the right time which happens for all of us by following the intuitive voice within. And so I I had certain karmic issues in my teens and 20s, and even in my early 30s that I had to reconcile. And uh, until we do that, it's sort of like that door is stopped for us. It, It won't open. And everything coalesces then and then we walk through that doorway. And that's precisely what happened for me. What were you studying then? What really um, helped you on your journey? Was there any material that really stood out for you that really, you know what, um, yeah, guided you, helped you? Was there many types of different authors or? I was so hungry for metaphysical knowledge it was like I couldn't get enough. I would just download it as quickly as I could. Uh, in the very beginning, Kevin, Edgar Casey, the Edgar Casey uh, readings. Um, and for the audience who doesn't know, Casey was a very famous American psychic, actually practiced uh, trans channeling. He would leave his body and get information from these things called the Akashic Files. And so I read a lot of Casey's uh, readings, which are quite difficult to to, um, absorb sometimes. They're written in biblical language. Um, But I kind of soldiered through that. And I read many other books. Um, One of my favorite spiritual teachers, who's more modern, is Eckhart Tolle. Um, And I've, I've done so much research and reading on all different forms of spirituality, uh, mediumship, um, you know, the legitimate stuff, because there's a lot of material out there that doesn't resonate with me. Um, But these were the true pioneers and the people today who are um, legitimate, genuine purveyors of spiritual truth and also genuine mediums. Yeah. I mean... Eckhart Tolle, uh, Eckhart Casey, they've all got their limitations. They've all got, all got their own issues. Um, they've all got their own blockages, as we all have. And, you know, yes, um, those people have gained large audiences from what feels truth, but uh, they're still on their own journey, you know. Um, you still got to discern, right? Where's oh, where, well, where and how has been your discernment? Well, it's interesting you ask that because this discernment is exceedingly important and it, it's we're at a point now in human consciousness where the use of wise discernment our very lives could really depend upon that of what is truth and when i say truth what i'm referring to is tr- uh, universal laws natural law that dictates the consequences of human behavior and human consciousness and never uh, in my opinion have we been at this level of crossroads um, in which discernment is so vital to our continued evolution and you're absolutely correct 
we all have limitations. We all have blind spots. Um, studying natural law, which I've done for a long time now, is how I live my life. I don't live it by man-made law or, you know, what is in the popular vernacular or what is popular. I live it through what is eternal, immutable truth. And people really need to educate themselves on that. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I listen to some people and they they think there's kids uh, in underground bases under, uh, you know, in, in Washington, D.C. I mean, uh, you can go that crazy or um, and some people will think uh, it's, it's bad of me saying that, you know, that I'm using the word crazy at the end of that uh, that sentence. And some people have other uh, uh, ideas. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think when certain things go against uh, shared reality or shared um, agreement, then um, uh, we've gone on the, off the deep end. But um you know, it's very simple. Truth is simple. And the, the ego-driven uh, consciousness, which I see so much of today, is what diverts us from the alignment with truth. And as long as, you, as one aligns oneself with natural law, which, again, are, are indiscriminate, uh, that, that apply to everybody, whether you believe in them or not, it's sort of like gravity. I mean, it's going to operate independent of your belief in it. Um, you know, if you, you, you push a glass to the edge and go, well, I don't believe in gravity, that glass is still going to fall, whether you believe in it or not. It's the same with natural law. And as long as one aligns oneself with natural law, then there is not the phenomena of karma created. And I think that that is something, a truth that um, people remain largely unaware of uh, as far as what is true. We're at this point where is that real or is it not real? And then we're also coming into the age of AI, which we're really going to be saying, is that real or is it manufactured? Um, so it takes the intuitive faculty, and it also requires an alignment and knowledge, knowledge of eternal immutable laws which govern the consequences of our behavior. Yeah. I mean, positive size of AI, um, you know, being in the creative industry just right now, whether I'm staying in this industry or not, uh, it really has helped and, and will help so many people with future projects and it can do such amazing things. Um, and um, yeah, I see the positive in it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I know there's a lot of fear base right now, but there is a lot of good it can do. I agree. And I saw something the other day on, on television um, with a young man who really was unable to speak, but yet there, th he held a device technology that enabled him to do that. So absolutely, it's just like, um, it's really neutral, just like money or, or the internet, and anything you can really think of that, that is essentially neutral. It's the intent behind it that determines is it going to be used for our spiritual collective evolution or is it going to be used to subvert that is it going to be used for control or manipulation and it can be used for both absolutely yes of, of, of course all right what services do you offer to clients well i'm very skilled in mediumship uh evidentiary mediumship uh, so I do a lot of private sessions, um, actually, well, nationally and internationally, by phone or through Zoom. I prefer phone because I do not want to see anything except what I'm being given uh, by the spirit world. I also offer Zoom webinars throughout the year on spiritually themed topics. Um, I, I teach many different things, the spiritual journey of the tarot. Uh, natural law seminars, uh, foundations of mediumship. I've done a lot of years of teaching at the largest U.S. Center for Spiritualism, which is Lily Hill. That's in New York. 
Uh, I also do what's called karmic astrology, and that's using the natal chart, the client's birth chart, to look at the evolutionary journey of their soul, their unique um, set of skills and challenges that they've come in with. And I, I really focus on the potential and the positive in the sessions. I do not believe in adhering to fear or, you know, sort of denigrating anybody for anything. Everything has positive and negative, as you were saying. Yeah. Uh, so those are the main services that I offer. Wow, that's that's quite a range of services. Fantastic. And your website is? Triple W Soul Visions. That's plural dot net. Soul Visions dot net. Wow. Um, yeah, that is fantastic. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're just putting um, your website up on the screen as well. And any links that people want to go to, they'll be in the description of the video as well. So let's get into your latest book, which is uh, Wisdom from the Spirit World. Now, you've done four books. Um, and as I said, this is your latest one. Where, this inf where does this information come from? In a sense, if you could, if you could round it up, or can you? Well, um, a, a combination of, of places. First and foremost, anything that I have ever created is done from my experience, my direct experience working with spirit. That's with a capital S, meaning the God energy, what most people call God, or you know, whatever you want to call that, a uh, higher power. Uh, and also from the personal sessions that I've done, uh, there's over 14,000 of my files that, that I have. And the repeating themes that I have seen through countless sessions, which are direct communications of higher wisdom from those in spirit who have an expanded perspective. Um, some, of, some of what I write about are also timeless teachings, um, you know, from Buddhism, Christianity, uh, Hinduism. I, I deal a lot with the human energy system through the chakra or energy portals. Um, so all of that, but most of it, which I feel is an excellent question that you asked. Uh, I don't think I've ever been asked that in all the years I've been doing podcasts and, and been on coast. What is the origin of the material? It's direct experience. Also, some of it is from my own uh, spirit guides team, those who have agreed to help me in my journey here. Interesting. So I should have asked you this before we get to the book as well. So when you're giving a session or a reading or whatever you want to call it, right, but that one-to-one -one connection with a client, uh, where... What are you connecting with? Are you connecting with their team? Is it your team connecting with their team? Or do you even understand how it's working, yet it just flows through you and it seems to work for the clients? Do you, you know, Have you tried to understand where that's coming from? Yes. Well, what happens is there's a phenomena of blending. Blending. And what it means is when I have somebody on the other end of the phone or through Zoom, um, their loved one, and this would be in a mediumistic session. I also do a lot of life guidance type sessions. Uh, but in a mediumistic session, meaning uh, one of their deceased loved ones, when I raise my consciousness through a very brief meditation beforehand, and because I've done this for so many years, there is a blending meaning with my consciousness and that spirit person's consciousness that occurs. And so... I don't think that a lot of people understand um, how mediumship really operates. It's not that the spirit person is giving me that information. It's my becoming aware of their consciousness. And that includes their life experiences, memories, um, you know, what shared experiences with the sitter or the client. Um, identity of them meaning their name or you know what they did for for a living what their hobbies were all of that is contained 
within the intelligence of the soul. We do not lose anything when we die. The soul is constantly gaining experience and it takes those experiences from each incarnation with it when it changes form or drops form, which means the body. So the soul is, you know, in, in these things called the Akashic Files, which are a record of every single thing that the soul has done from the beginning of time, whenever, whenever that was, we don't know. Um, but you can access that. And I also do Akashic record readings. I forgot to mention that when you asked me what type of readings I do. Um, without using the, the, the tool of the birth chart, uh, connecting to somebody and being shown the Akashic, which is stored in the subconscious of all of us. And it can be read just like you read a book. So does that information, when you connect with the Akashic, do you find that a client's asking for that? Because something from some particular past life, but we call it past, don't we? But it may be happening in a, in a, in a way that we don't understand that would look like now. It's all now, now, now. But um, yeah, we call it past, don't we? Um, but the, uh, someone's coming to you for that type of reading because something in those past lives are affecting, has you know come into this life. And it's something we've not dealt with, but yet, yet it shows up in different ways in our, you know, lifetime. Yeah, you're exactly right on that because <clears throat> there are certain imprints. If you think of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of dating myself on this. But I grew up in the '60s, listening to records, you know, vinyl, and you, you can look at a record and see those grooves in there, right? Or with a, a magnetic tape. You know, I, I also used to listen to uh, cassette tapes or even a CD. Um, there are imprints on, on those that replay that what was recorded there. So it's the same way. The only difference is with the Akashic, it's energy. We're not talking about a physical groove in a, in a piece of vinyl. We're talking about a replay of energy in consciousness. So what happens is... Um, there can be certain triggers that we get. I've actually had this happen to me. Maybe you have too, and I'm sure some of the listening audience has, in which you simply do not have a reference point for why something is incredibly painful for you. Uh, there's a certain relationship, perhaps, that you feel very familiar with that individual, or you have a hard time with that individual. These are what I call and term replays or echoes from the Akashic. And it's in the subtle mental body and in astrology that's symbolized by the planet Uranus. Uranus is the higher mental body. The lower mental body is Mercury. Um, so in that subtle mental body, these are recorded. And so those can be triggered by similar or identical circumstances. And the person might not even understand what's going on, uh, you know, with that. And there can be sort of like a, a Kevin, a, like a, a post-traumatic stress, you know, with that sort of thing. So it's quite fascinating, actually. And when people bring that into the conscious mind, magically, somehow, and this I don't know how it operates, but the individual then is able to heal it or to release it by having conscious knowledge of it. Yeah, but I'm sure sometimes um, what um, what's there in the past is you know so powerful that they can't release it, and you know what maybe it's just becoming comfortable with it, and you know when it does come up, just to understand that yeah, well maybe that's from the past. Uh, it doesn't have to be now, um, and I can I can work with that. Yes, I think that we never truly get rid of um, trauma, and particularly what I have studied a lot is <clears throat> uh, family traumatic patterns. Those come through a lot when I'm doing mediumship, for example, abuse, alcoholism, addiction, abandonment. I wrote about those in Wisdom from the Spirit World. 
um, a lot of people have have had to face that type of pain. And so um, you're right, it makes an imprint. And I consider those trauma. And so um, sometimes we never truly release that, but yet we can make it a little bit better. We can come to acknowledge that we don't have to carry that depth of pain anymore. And that we have tools, spiritual tools, that can pull us into the present moment when those things arise. You know, mindfulness, breath, uh, presence. Uh, those are all tools that, that we can use. Yeah, absolutely. And even if that's just to... Um... Uh, not you know, uh, not to blame yourself for why you feel like you do. You know, the, you don't understand where the hell it's coming from, right? But as you say, yeah, yeah, um, traumatic events maybe from even past lives have such an imprint that we don't understand that carry on, carry on, carry on. And maybe we we're hearing that for many lifetimes, but it doesn't it shouldn't stop you from having the life that you want, <laughs> right? Uh, we can all have the life that we want. I think we can. Would you agree? I do. Um, and I, I wish more people would open to what lies beyond the rational mind, because I, I am not a, a huge proponent of psychotherapy. I, I believe it is useful in certain circumstances. I myself have gone to psychotherapy. I'm not at all ashamed to admit that. I think we all need help at certain times in our life. We need a listening ear. We need an objective mind or a listener, you know, a person. Um, but we also, I believe at some point, are called to explore the shadow. And that means what is hidden. That means the dark parts. And you're absolutely correct when you say that the, that trauma can be replayed from lifetime to lifetime. I've seen this happen. Uh, with certain people that I've read for. And you have to understand, each lifetime is an opportunity to um, heal another layer of the covering that we have put around this thing called the soul. That's the only reason that we're here, is to remove, and I mean the only reason that we are here, is to remove another layer from that light. And I'm not saying light like it's used in, quote, new age stuff. I mean the, the frequency of God. And that is the only reason we come to this place called the schoolroom of Earth. Yeah, and you know, healing to me sounds so goddamn boring sometimes, right? It's like, okay, we're going to put a plaster on that and we're going to wait till it's... But actually, what you're talking about, you can tell me if I'm wrong, we're gonna, we can have different opinions, that's fine. But healing maybe could be, and maybe is a big part of it, doing what you really feel pulled to do, doing something that's got value fulfillment in it. When you do what you're really pulled to do, or do what I call value fulfillment, getting something clear, you know, fulfill, feeling fulfilled from it, right? Maybe you're healing some part of you that you don't even understand. So when you say healing, it, it, it can be fun because you know what? You're doing it automatically when you're in alignment. You don't even know you're doing it. Absolutely. I always say, uh, you know, I, I have really focused lately on surrender, the concept of surrender. And that doesn't mean to become a doormat or a wimp. That's not what that means. It means non-resistance to what is. And so what shows up in my life, unless I get a really large menacing red flag about it, um, I usually go with it and, you know, remove my own rational, my own linear mind resistance to it. And I find that things work out much more easily for me uh, when I've gotten away from, and I did this at an early age. I was super rebel when I was young. My parents wanted to tear their hair out. Um, I never, if my parents said, go, you know, don't do that. That's the first thing I would go and do. So I've always sort of followed my own intuition and my own pathway. I got into a lot of trouble. Quite honestly, I, I became addicted to alcohol. 
uh, drugs. I mean, I write very openly about that. I'm not, again, I'm, I'm very transparent. Um, I haven't drank in many, many years. Uh, but you have to get to the core of the authentic self. And uh, th the only way to do that is to be fearless and to follow your own inner voice. Yeah, very, very true. So when you, um, so for you to, to get off the alcohol, to get off the drugs and everything else, right? And we've all been there, right? A lot of us have, right? Um, and well done for being sober for so long as well, right? Yep. When you surrendered, did you surrender? Well, yeah, did you surrender to get off them? Or did you, actually, no, I think you, you probably, we can tell us as well, you probably found your calling somewhere, didn't you? Yeah, well, it's interesting because I was 25 years old when I did that. And absolutely, in order to break the hold of any type of addiction, there has to be surrender. And, and again, that doesn't mean, see, surrender, the word surrender has been a, a, you know, a lot of people think that that means weakness. And it's quite the opposite. Surrender, it, it, it's, you know, it's very paradoxical. It means to me strength because you're not doing it operating from this very limited reality, which is the rational mind. The rational mind is extremely limited in what it can do. Uh, but the, the spirit mind, and that's what I call it, uh, the spirit mind is unlimited. And, you know, the the infinity symbol, the the, the laying down eight. Um, I, I've studied the tarot for many, many years. So you, you see in the Rider weight deck a lot of symbolism in the uh, infinity symbol. And it means unlimited potential. So if we work with that... That's when we really come in to our authentic power. And I don't, I don't mean fake power. You hear a lot about power, owning my power. I'm not sure a lot of people really understand what true power is. And it's, it's not, I believe, what most people think it is. Um, so the, the, the older I get, the more paradox I find in spirituality. It, it's extremely paradoxical. It, it is. I mean, you know, you say you surrender now, even even today, even, in, you know, uh, but you're surrendering at a point where you've got value fulfillment. You're doing what you feel really pushed to do, driven to do, you know, you fulf it fulfills you on every level. So surrender with, with a lot of happiness, I'm guessing, stop me if I'm wrong, but happiness at the, at the core because you're doing what you're doing so yeah it's easy to surrender then but surrendering when you're not in your valley of fulfillment as well that's difficult oh i could tell you all about that yeah <laughs> i could tell you all about that um i used to beat my head against the hall uh, wall um wondering why things didn't happen in the time frame that i wanted them to happen for example well, guess what happened? A lot of, I created a lot of suffering for myself, well, you know, and, and frustration. And suffering is extremely compelling uh, to get us to change. In fact, I would dare say that most awakenings absolutely don't happen without some form of suffering. So I, I look at, you know, what happened to me, I created a lot of suffering when I when I was drinking and using drugs and so forth. And, um, you know, but but now when I look back on that, it was a magical gift because at the time, of course, I couldn't see that. Are you kidding me? You couldn't tell me anything. I was unteachable. And so but as time went on, I learned that I, I learned that I don't have to be making it my way all the time i surrender to what is and i think in doing that we sort of are led onto the pathway if we allow ourselves to be led instead of always having to be the leader or being in control um that's when we do come in to our calling 
And you are you are correct. Yes, I love I love 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 being a medium. I love my work. I love helping people. I love giving service. I've done many many hours of service without earning anything, and I don't regret a single moment of that. It's all valuable. And what we give, we receive. You know, and I'm thinking here, right? maybe when you flow as well, even if you're not in what you're supposed to be doing, if it's going to lead you to what, you know, maybe a life that you really don't want, right? If, you know, if you, when you flow, it's just pushing you to more of what you don't want, right? Because flowing, going against what you're saying, really, but I'm going to kind of like join up to what you're saying. And, it, and it's going against what you want, you're more miserable than ever by just you know not even trying to build you know direct your life but you are trying to direct it in some sense but you're still flowing because there are bigger things out of your control completely maybe it just gets to a point where you think fuck it do you know what i mean and it gets so painful that by just flowing it made you change anyway because you were still resistive you you had to go down that path do you know what i mean because you were so bloody resistive yeah true Uh, there's a fine line you see, what's happened is sometimes people misinterpret, well, okay, I'm going to surrender. Now what? I'm going to sit here and, and wait for somebody to knock on my door, the phone to ring or an email to come or, you know, a job to magically appear. No, it doesn't mean that. What it means is put your intent. I, I tell people very practical advice sometimes, which is quite useful. You can't avoid the practical uh, right now. What's your intent? If you you feel what you're drawn to, what does that look like? And what what are you earning? What are you doing? What you know? Do you want to work with people? Do you want to work alone? What brings you joy, even if you're not being paid for it? Right. Write that down. Focus on it with unwavering intent, and see what shows up. That way, you're laying groundwork you're not doing nothing you're not being passive you're a part of so it's co-creating i know that word has been very uh, misused very overused personally i don't like it but let's just say you're collaborating with higher source with this unlimited potential and you know there's something so powerful about this you know I'm, and I'm I think you tell me if I'm wrong but there's, there's a lot of your clients probably in this situation right there's a, something about this time now and maybe it's going to carry on for a little bit and maybe it's going to ramp up but it's really you know no matter what the what seems to be destroying in the world you know what I mean there's the craziness going on around us this is the time to now uh, we're being pushed a lot of us to to go in a new direction that a direction that's really fulfilling right <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I'm going to be quite blunt. The universe really doesn't care if the human species extinguishes itself. It will continue to expand. It will continue to be. And so we are the masters of our, our ship here. We, We are the captains of the ship. Nobody's going to come and save us. There is no savior, uh, definitely not a political savior. Um, you know, we we are the, the, the masters. We are the captains. And th- this is what, you know, in, in Christianity, uh, Jesus met when he said, the kingdom of heaven is within. Not out there. It's within every human being and I'm extremely passionate and really an animal advocate. I am vegan. Um, so I'm always speaking on behalf of those who have no voice. That same light is within animals. And in fact, I actually consider consider them highly more spiritual than human beings because they do not have an ego. Um, so the answer is not out there. It's within, and we've all heard that. It's kind of like, a, you know, a cliche now. Well, the answer's within, the answer's within. And I'm not sure people really understand what that means. It means you, you can't be apathetic anymore. 
you 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 have to use whatever your skill is whether that's being a medium a carpenter a podcast host a lawyer a doctor it doesn't matter it's all valuable and you have to serve in that way yeah now people will get pissed off at me saying this right but some people but you could say well you know if you're doing uh, adult work or only fans or whatever right you know if you're living in purpose or value fulfillment forget the word purpose it's so big sometimes value fulfillment I'll, I'll just use the word that i keep banging on about right you know what uh what you're what you fulfill with one day may not be the same in a couple of months or maybe it will right or may or it, none of that really matters but what are you what are you what's going on right now you know i'm just saying there's so many things that we could say we don't understand why it gives people fulfillment but actually karmically that's where they're supposed to be no matter what it is Exactly. So therefore, someone cleaning toilets, Absolutely. filling their purpose in that moment, uh, just as someone who is, you know, uh, I don't know, a spiritual leader, a spiritual person, um, what you're doing, you're f right, right now, you and I, or fulfilling purpose. Could it be multiple? Could it be multiple? Could this be, you know, this is one valley fulfillment and it obviously, you know, obvious things, mother, you know, <laughs> um, whatever, you know, just the normal, you know, uh, shared things that we have to do, um, parenthood and everything else, depending on what, what, what's going on. But, um, but, could it, but could it be multiple? Yes, because you see, the divinity, the, the, the soul, is not limited in any way. Our minds are, as I mentioned earlier, our habits are, but the divine within is, is entire potentiality. Yeah. So being present to that enables us to evolve. De-evolution occurs when we're stuck in the past. That's why I've written so much about forgiveness, not forgiveness, oh, I'm sorry, type forgiveness. Forgiveness in a spiritual sense means a release of the past. A release of the past. Absolutely. I totally agree with what you're saying there, uh, Carol, uh, because you've actually talked about this in other books, embracing the ties uh, that bind. And you mentioned it in there as well, um, the idea of forgiving. Yes, it's been a big subject for you. Um, with with the clients that you see, how big a thing is that then that, you know, they haven't forgot forgiven an ex-partner um, Ah, uh, 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 family member, uh, friend. That you know, if you're going to hold on to past energy, um, it's it, you, basically what you're saying is it's 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 not helping us in so many ways to move on. Yes. So, I would say it's you know in 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 a list of issues that I've heard repeatedly. It's probably number two. Um, the first one being. What is my purpose? That's the million dollar question, what is my purpose? And so I'm just beginning a new work on the soul's journey. So that's going to be the next book. Uh, but forgiveness, yes, there are people who, um, you know, someone passes over that issue, whatever that issue is, forgiveness is not settled, right? So that person, you know, now that person is in the spirit world and the client is saying, well, did my, did my mother ever love me? You know, uh, why did my father treat me so horribly? Um, you know, my, my ex-husband passed over and why, why did he cheat on me? Or, you know, those sorts of things. So I think sometimes people get stuck there in that pain. And so by releasing it and knowing, take the experience or look at the lesson and how it in some way 
And this might take some doing to really comprehend it. But how did that in some way, that experience, contribute to your evolution, to your awareness, to your growth? Instead of looking at it as, well, I can't get over and using that as an excuse, um, you know, well, I was abused as a child. Well, yeah, nobody's denying that. And that's incredibly, incredibly traumatizing and painful. But are you going to stay stuck in that? So there needs to be a use of it, not ignoring it, but using it for, you know, to contribute and to grow. And using it versus healing as well from it. Um, how do when will we know that we've healed from it rather than we're stuck in it in a sense? Um, loses its charge. So what you're saying as well is, you know, you, you see some people that have gone through something really traumatic with someone, for, just for example, right? And then they've gone and attracted someone else with the exact same issues, right? So life mirrors to us what we can't see in ourselves. Well, life is a mirror in a sense. Yeah, you you know your books are coming up on the screen now. There's many books that you've like you say. There's four books, and they're all really good books. I mean, when I had a look online on them, uh, the chapters are just so um, useful, and you know, just you you can you can relate to them. Do you know what I mean? Well, I felt I could. Thank you. I appreciate. I worked very hard, very hard. Um, I'm the one who sat sat at my computer every single day and painstakingly also went over what my editor, I have a professional editor, um, but most people don't, don't know that a lot of people out there, if they have a national platform, they don't sit at a computer and write a book. Um, if they have a ghostwriter, I can tell you if I, my name goes on a book, every word in that book was written by me. Um, and again, it's from personal experience. I am very real. I am transparent. I will tell you what is true about this work called mediumship, what is not true, suspect of, um, what is real and what is not real. No, I, I, we're going to touch on a few. I know we've only got a limited time with you, but there were some really powerful ones um, as well. Uh, well, for, they stood out to me, do you know what I mean? So when you say, um, or what, let's just look at the perspective then, because we were just obviously with what we're talking about, when a contract or fulfillment of karma is over, <laughs> you know, really, yes, letting go and releasing that, because that, that you know, from whatever 
issues that you've had with anyone it's you know it's it's only helpful it's so helpful from for uh, for you to be able to move on to a much more fulfilling life but that's because the contract and fulfillment of karma is over at that point so what's the point in uh, you know always me in in a sense yes so it's sort of again that would be the removal of that charge right so dissimilar energy according to natural law repels and it goes away goes away from those two particles of whatever <laughs> go apart from each other and um there are people who you know another common question i get in in readings is um you know what what why am i so inextricably attracted to this certain individual but we never seem to be able to make a go of the relationship and what i tell them is because there's an imprint there from prior lifetime there's a remembrance between the two souls you've come back together again to uh work on unfinished business to do another level of it another layer of it or ironically here you go you came back again to go apart here's another paradox and there are there are certain souls who have to meet up again in order to sort of in a sense release one another you know to 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 let go and say i wish you well i love you unconditionally and to go apart that's a difficult one yeah for people yes it is it is yeah for sure and you're able and have been able to help people see that from that different perspective from that larger perspective of the soul the deeper reason yeah of uh of what's really going on uh which has helped people move on i'm sure it has um you know i i always say all all one can do is plant a seed it's up to that individual to water it and to nurture it you know um have i had people who are resistant to what is being communicated 100% yes again i'm very honest and real about this work there are people who reject um poison a point in case very quickly i was doing a group i've done a lot of group mediumship and and um there were a pair of sisters who were sitting in the front row and their father came through from the spirit world the father had been an abusive alcoholic and immediately when i said dad is here and i identified a few things gave a few pieces of evidence and the arms their arms crossed language came in and we don't want to hear from him but the father was trying to communicate boy did i mess up boy do i have regrets you know about the way i treated you if i could come back and do it again with you i would and they just put up stop signs and said i we don't want to hear from him so i mean yeah those circumstances happen not frequently but you know again to be transparent do they happen yes they happen uh the majority of people are very open to hearing from some uh sometimes people want to rush the communication not listening to what is being said uh but yet that spirit person has a need to communicate if there's no need then there's no presence of that spirit communicator you know so there there has to be a need on their behalf uh for the communication to take place absolutely now just going back to those two sisters just as an example not bringing anything you know personal up about them but the example of look if you can sort things out in this life <laughs> um there must be something uh helpful about that rather than waiting you know to have crossed over and then to sort it out i'm sure that, i'm sure it's all okay to do that but do you feel that there's something of value to sort it out on this on this level but then again if someone else doesn't want to sort it out that's different but if you can try oh yeah so I, uh, you know it's it's kind of like the little kid that doesn't want to clean his room and his mother says well you're either going to clean it now or you're going to clean it later today but you are going to clean it so we're like that little kid and we go nah, I don't want to deal with that and we put it in the in our 
you know, our attic or whatever. We put it to the to the behind uh, behind us, and so nothing disappears, nothing evaporates. You're either going to do it now, which I think we need to do, so that it's not accumulated debris, covering up, adding more to the to around our light, or we're going to do it later. Um, so this was a lesson for them. Um, I, I don't presume to know what that lesson was for them, but no. nothing is by happenstance. Nothing. Nothing is coincidence. And just because we cannot see or understand the significance of it does not mean that that is not present. And that's where intuition comes in and surrender comes in. That we have to trust. That's another big, you know, glaring issue that a lot of people have is lack of trust. So true. It's so true. Um, you know, I, I heard something <laughs> um, funny recently, which was, you know, uh, this 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 uh, guy was saying that, you know, he never, his father never told him that he loved him, yet he came to realize in the end that, well you know, who brought the stamps for the birthday card? <laughs> Dad did, right? Um, my point is, you know, for some of us, love is showing in different ways. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, there was a book out a number of years ago. It's called The Five Lo Love Languages. And I thought it was very well written. And it, it was true that, there, you know, there are, there are doers, there are expressors there are feelers you know there are gift givers <laughs> so people express um affection or love in different ways and the true understanding you know i i personally have had to deal with that um in my own life i won't go into detail but you know, why you know why wasn't this expressed to me you know what why and and it left this this hole inside of me of wondering why and then it dawned on me and that that came from my intuition that that person was doing their love in their way right. you know and so um and i think as we mature we look at our parents for example and we go, you know, they may not have been the best parents in the world, but they were doing as they were taught, or perhaps they were doing what they were indoctrinated with or what they what they thought was good. And that's where, you know, we're called upon to go, okay, I'm, a, I'm an individual and I have to uh, live my life as I see fit. Absolutely, yes. Um you mentioned in the book as well, our power of choice determines the quality of our lives. Just very briefly, just touch upon that. Well, um, we're all born with that gift and, you know, free will. And we've heard a lot about that. We've heard a lot about it. Um, is there free will? Yes, there is. Uh, I would say, I would add this, that you can choose anything you want be prepared to accept the consequences of that because of natural law. So can you choose to go out and murder people or to, you know, do evil? Absolutely. You can choose to do that. Uh, who is going to uh, be responsible for that? You are. It may not be immediate, but because of the imprint that that action made, um, you will definitely be responsible for it. So we absolutely have free will. That's why in all of my books, I have called these um, plans that the soul makes before incarnating blueprints instead of contracts. Because blueprints are much more, um, they're, they're sort of more of an outline um, versus, you know, sign on the dotted line. There's no wiggle room. This is what you have to do. Well, that's interesting. So just going on the murder thing, right? Um, you know, when two people come together where that event can take place, it's with free will whether that's going to go through or not. As you say, it's a blueprint. It doesn't have to. You could stop it. Yes. 
at any point we have the freedom to choose uh we can we can devolve if we want to you know uh, and it could be i don't know the answer it could be we end up as a rock i i don't know well, we could devolve as well by 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 their actions in this life you know by, by the way we treat people yes because uh, another natural law of cause and effect right and any action has an equal and opposite reaction so anything that we do it's like that boomerang you know and it, it comes back um i i believe nowadays karma is a bit faster than it has been in the fat in the past um it's you know it's sort of sped up uh particularly we're in for a major shift in january because the planet pluto which is evolutionary potential is shifting into the sign of aquarius it's been in capricorn since 2008. Uh, so many structures structures capricorn rules structure it rules law it rules banking government organized religion those are all capricornian so that's why you saw so much crumbling pluto's evolutionary job is to unearth um uh, impurities and to you know heal the patients that's on the table so when it shifts into a, it's in retrograde it retrogrades for about half of the year when it shifts into Aquarius again, um, Aquarius is very future oriented and it's about the collective of humanity. So you're going to notice AI. Yeah, that's why we had all this talk all of a sudden about AI. Yeah. All of that is very futuristic and there's going to be much more of an evolutionary focus on humanity as a whole as as the collective consciousness and not the current division that we are seeing that has been actually set up by occult forces yep i wouldn't disagree with that never have we been so divided for a long time most definitely um that's interesting what you have to say there and again, we're just sort of, you know, very briefly touching on your work here. We're almost at the end because, I mean, you know, you promised us an hour and I know I'm conscious of that and we're going over that quickly right now as well. So just, just I think the final thing as well is um, how the universe talks to us, just very quickly. I mean, how does the universe talk to yourself, Carol? Or how do we recognize within ourselves that the universe is talking to us? Um, and this is for everybody. I, I in no way, and since the beginning, I, I, I in no way, I never refer to myself as gifted. And I understand people see it like that. But I have always been about people knowing that they have the, the voice within themselves. And so synchronicities, which means meaningful coincidence, uh, seeing um uh, you know, the same things popping up in different ways, coming to you within a short period of time, um, intuition, uh, messages that you get from others, um, you know, dreams, um, intuitions, uh, brief meditations in which you're shown symbolism. Symbolism is, is also very powerful. So that's the way the universe communicates. It also communicates through sacred geometry. Um, you will see sacred geometry showing up in all of nature, as well as the human DNA, human cells. Um, so there is this unity, the underlying truth of spirit is unity. And the illusion, illusionary part is division. That's the nature of the physical plane, is separation and division. Of course, yeah. Well, I know you also do a lot of work on dream interpretation, dream work, or you, you, you've discussed it on many previous shows uh, that I've seen as well, and we never got into that. But there's always another time. I know you come on uh, to many shows. So you know what? We, we, we will get you back on. We will. Um, Thank you. Yeah, most definitely. So... Just remind us of your website one final time, Carol. It is? Yes, thank you. 
uh, soulvisions.net. And if I may, Kevin, just mention, um, I have a mediumship page on Facebook, and that's facebook.com backslash soul medium, S-O-U-L plus the word medium, facebook.com backslash soul medium. Okay, wonderful. Well, that's been coming up on the screen as well, along with your books throughout this interview. Again, all the descriptions are in the link below. Uh, Carol, I just want to thank you uh, so, so much for coming on today. It's been uh, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much.